Ladies and gentlemen, when he's paying respects and showing respects to the 13 American lives that were lost because of his decision-making, 13 American soldiers, apparently Joe Biden, you could look at the video, apparently Joe Biden looks and checks his watch, if you can believe that. Go look at the video for yourself. I mean, I, I could be wrong, although I'm. it looks like he's trying to quickly check the time. One could say, well, he's trying to see how long this is going to take. So the dig- dignified transfer, Biden slammed for appearing to look at his watch during ceremony for fallen Marines. Biden was receiving the bodies of the 13 U.S. service members who lost their lives in Kabul. And... Biden met with families of the troops who lost their lives, and he also attended the dignified transfer of the fallen troops, a military ritual of receiving the remains of those who've lost their lives in foreign combat at the Dover Air Force Base. During the event, Biden appeared to look down at his watch, sparking criticism from conservatives. So it does look like with Biden, who knows what his, whether it's like a tick or like some kind of uh, reflex. Nobody knows if there's anything premeditated with Biden because he's, let's just put it this way, in the nicest manner possible. The lights are on, but nobody's home. But I, I'd like to know, number one, if Democrats, how they, re, how they would react if, if Trump, while showing respect for 13 Marines, that his decisions, like it was Biden's decision to not remove Americans, to not evacuate on January 21st, that was the issue. Not the country falling, not us leaving. That was the issue. The manner, the haphazard, rushed, completely irresponsible, inept, failed manner that showed the world that the greatest country in the world completely dropped the ball on this. The Doha Agreement, signed by President Trump and the adversaries there, we'll call them the T-Ban, had us leaving May 1st. Biden decided to stay to spite Trump. He decided to start leaving May 1st. We were supposed to leave by May 1st. He decided to start leaving by May 1st. Again, this is very simple. For the morally superior, wonderful, God bless them, God bless them, wonderful, morally superior Democrats. We were supposed to been we were supposed to have been out already May first. They said the adversaries if you if you stay past May there are going to be repercussions all of that. Biden didn't care or the people around him didn't care his handlers. So we left starting May first. We began evacuating. What was the rationale? Why? In the comments section, tell me why. Why did we leave? After May 1st, when we negotiated a deal to stay May 1st, I think it's to spite Trump. Hit subscribe, by the way, to this channel. Tell your friends about this channel if you want to read my latest uh, opinion piece in the Jerusalem Post. It's in the pinned comment. You can read my writing in the Hill, the Huffington Post, Salon, the Jerusalem Post, other publications on hagoodman.com. There's a section within that website, my website, hagoodman.com, where I write against counterinsurgency conflicts. In the Roanoke Times, the Hill, the Huffington Post, the Jerusalem Post. And this was a counterinsurgency conflict that nobody's talking about. Nobody's talking about this endless, endless war in that context. So hit subscribe to this channel. If you want to give a super thanks, I thank you very much. That's below next to the like and the share buttons. And if you want to support my work long term, my Patreon is below. I don't understand why Biden would do this other than the fact that he doesn't really have any control over what he says, which is why they had to mute his microphone. They are handling him like somebody that needs to be taken care of all the time. Everybody knows this when he was slurring his, you're talking about somebody who was slurring slurring his speech. (laughs) You're talking about somebody who was not only slurring his speech, but communicating in a very bizarre manner, talking about his like experiences with a you know a really mean person named Cornflakes, and how you know he had um, 
you know, hairs on his legs that he would use uh, sunscreen and then something would happen to those hairs. And look, look, you can't do it justice. You would have to listen to it. But then that's a big issue because the algorithm. I used to, I used to play the clips all the time. Okay, now you, you can't do that. So they're protecting him in every possible way. Nobody understands how this man functions, okay? But if he looked at his his watch to see like how long the ceremony was going to be, that's a very disrespectful thing. The optics, let's say he didn't mean it to be disrespectful. The optics are terrible. That is basically it basically exemplifies Biden's administration. We have to, th- their mentality is we have to simply do whatever we need to do for public relations. We don't mean anything. We don't mean what we say. And this is a man who like shed tears the other day during a speech. Now he's checking his watch. We don't mean what we say. Um, well, at least we're not Trump. Trump was cruel. We're, we're empathetic. Even though <laughs> on every topic, Democrats have presided over greater cruelty on every topic. You can look at facilities now in the southern geographic region of our country, 16 times capacity by one CBS News article. You have an evacuation that was rushed specifically to spite Trump. You have eviction, an eviction moratorium that's ending. That's not the Supreme Court's fault, and that's not Republicans. That's Democrats who tanked American society to keep people safe, and it didn't work. The cities and states with the most draconian laws or protocols, which, by the way, their own governors didn't abide by, okay? When when Pelosi wanted to go to the hair salon, she did, okay? Without you-know-what. Whitmer, all of them, Newsom. So, and then Cuomo got an Emmy, And then we found out, well, actually, we learned right before he got the Emmy, actually, that he was putting infected people in nursing homes. 12 to 15,000 Americans lost their lives. Could you imagine 12 to 15,000 New Yorkers in nursing homes? Could you imagine being, like, in your late 70s or 80s in that elderly care facility, not being able to speak to your family? And because Cuomo instructed these facilities, by the way, they gave donations to his campaign, by the way, he absolved them of any legal liability, legal immunity from, from, from lawsuits. Gee, what a coincidence. Where have we seen Democrats act in that type of manner? Oh, how about uh, Michigan with Whitmer? Um, Phil Murphy has also this type of issue in New Jersey. God bless the people of New Jersey, New York, Michigan, and Democratic-run states that where the governors were shielded by press and media. Yet they put infected people among the most vulnerable. This okay, this health crisis is you can look at the ages and you could see what's really going on, which is why the most vulnerable are 60 to 70 to 80 year olds which is why this paranoia throughout the world, it's interesting to see. But anyway, well, I'm just going to leave this. You can see, I mean, I urge you to see this for yourself. And just to be fair, am I overreacting? Or am I Biden slammed for appearing to look at his watch during ceremony for, for, for fallen Marines? So... This is the leader we have. Let's let me let me look at this. I'm gonna look at this right now as I'm doing this right here. So you can just I urge you to look at this yourself. Yeah. <laughs> he did <laughs> he did look at his watch. Oh my god. This man. I mean, it's like he look look he is one fry short of a happy meal give me your thoughts below unbelievable and 
Those Marines should be alive today. It was his fault for not evacuating January 21st. Give me your thoughts. Hit